Hello, I'm Pastor Brian, and I want to thank you so much for joining me as we look into God's Word to see His timeless truth. When you face different trials in life, such as maybe you're dealing with cancer or a loved one is dealing with cancer, perhaps you have a broken relationship, perhaps you're going through trials at work, Perhaps it is just the world around you that it's having you down. Perhaps you're having financial issues. Whatever it may be, where do you tend to look to deal with that? Where do you tend to go? Do you look within yourself and say, all right, this is what I can do? Or is your first response, I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to wait upon him because I know that he will never let me down and he will never forsake me, that in him there is that strength that I need. Well, in today's psalm, Psalm 27, we will look at as David, really different from other psalms, will go ahead and he will first have us turn right towards the Lord and who he is. See, a lot of psalms start with a lament, and then it will go through, and it will resolve it. But this psalm is different, where it will start off, and he will say, this is my confidence in the Lord. Then it will say, I'm going to seek his tent, his house. I'm going to seek them. Then I'm going to seek his face. And then after that prayer, he's going to say, I'm going to wait upon the Lord, because I am confident that he will do what he says he will do. Before we dig in any further into Psalm 27, let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that you would give me the words to say and those that are listening, that you would give them ears to hear this important truth that comes from your word. Lord, just guide me and direct me that we would understand your word better. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. So hopefully you have a Bible and you can open it up or turn it on to Psalm 27. Now, the psalmist, David, and, and that's what we're told in the heading, that he really says, all right, it, it doesn't, my confidence doesn't lie in my own abilities, but it lies in the strength and the force of the Lord and who he is. Uh, really, it, it says, he's saying, really, when you have problems, don't start with yourself, but start with the Lord. And he's going to go ahead and show that relationship that he has. And so it starts off Psalm 27, uh, a Psalm of David. It starts off like this, verse 1 through 3. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat my flesh, my adversaries and foe, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arises against me, yet I will be confident. In this first psalm it is this, uh, it's showing David in his relationship with the Lord. And if you see it, look at it, he goes, my light, my salvation, uh, my life is where that stronghold. The difference between saying the Lord is light, salvation, stronghold is completely different than if David says he is my light, my salvation, my stronghold. And in that, we realize there's a radical difference. The difference between when you would go and seek about going on a trip and you would go to maybe a travel agent or a book and just kind of go, all right, what's that like? Or between that and going to somebody who has actually been there and having that personal dialogue, going, this is where you need to go. This is where the restaurant you need to eat. And this on the menu is really great. And do this and don't do this in the morning, but do it in the afternoon because of all the people. And you could imagine the difference. And there's a lot of people that go, all right, I'm going to follow after the Lord. But it is of no value to them in the sense that without that personal relationship, they don't have that salvation. They don't have that forgiveness of sin. So hopefully when you come to the Lord, you have that deep personal relationship like David does. And when it talks about him being a light, it's this metaphor for his holiness, his truth, his life. And he says, you know what? You're my salvation. You're my personal savior. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. 
The idea of a stronghold is a fortified place to provide protection, refuge for attack from the attack of the enemy or the foe, that he is that. And in him there is life. And in that, that means that, that in him he is emphasizing that he is his everything. Is that describe your relationship with the Lord? That he is your everything, that you seek him in all that he is. See, we see that he has evildoers. And again, it, it really lays it on here and says, this is how bad it is. They, they, they seek me to eat my flesh. The idea of these are like wild animals that are seeking to devour him. Perhaps you have an enemy like that, 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 that they've come after you and they're relentless and they're like wanting to destroy you, wanting to, to make you fail and all of that. But what does he say? Even though they're, they're all up against me, that my heart Really, the, the strength of what he has is in the Lord that he shall not fear. I haven't had a war try to arise against me particularly. Yes, there are wars in the world. But again, I have enemies, but probably not to the point where I would say, yes, this is a war against me. And then even in that, he says, yet I will be confident. See, he has that personal relationship with God. He has that relationship because he knows of what the Lord provides and that it's personal to him. And in that personal aspect of it, he knows he can turn to the Lord. That in the midst of the biggest problems around in his life, he is going to experience the greatness of God with all of these big problems. See, what we have to stand, understand is if the one if the one for me is greater than the one against me, I don't have to fear. No matter what you have coming against you, physically, relationships, all of that, knowing that God created all things. And that if you have that relationship with you, even though you go through those difficult things, the Lord is for you as you are refined, as you trust and cast your cares upon him. Know that he is there. He is your refuge. You can say, I shall not fear. My heart shall not fear. At the very core of who he is, not fearing of, of, of all that he is and that he has confidence in the Lord. Do you have that type of relationship with the Lord as David does? And if you don't, we'll look into the next two sections and really see where David gets all of that. First, it's knowing who God is and, and the greatness of God and that having that relationship there. But it, that relationship comes from knowing who God is. Now, how much energy do you spend in trying to know God? Obviously, we have the Word of God that gives us information about who He is, His heart, His character, what He's done in the past, what He will do in the future. And in that, we have confidence that the Lord can will do what He says He will do because He has in the past. And so, Verses uh, four through six will talk about really seeking, he, that David's going to seek the house of the Lord. Let me go ahead and, and read through it and then we'll talk about it. One thing I have said of the Lord that I will seek after you, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up, my enemies all around me, and I will, off I will offer in his tent sacrifice with shouts of joy, I will sing and make melody to the Lord. All right, let's go ahead and go through that. When it talks about that, this one thing, as I set off, this one thing that I'm going to do, I am going to seek after 
you. Uh, in fact, the idea of seeking after the Lord in the Old Testament is a little bit different than in the New Testament. Obviously, they had some of the older writings, uh, like the Pentateuch and all of that. They had that. But really, when we look through the Old Testament, we see whether it be through uh, the tabernacle or through in the temple, the, the place where God resided in a special way, we see his presence there. And, and in that, we go, now we have the Holy Spirit. We have God dwelling within us. We have his word. How we know him is we go before the Lord in prayer. We, we seek his face that way. And, and so what a benefit that God himself dwells within us. And he's saying, how can I be near to you? I want to dwell in your house. Uh, the time that uh, David's writing this, it's still um, the tabernacle that's built and, and not um, the temple yet. But what we see is in all of this, he's really seeking to make sacrifice, to go to worship the Lord. He wants to live for the glory of God, to live life in God's presence. And really consult and have fellowship with the Lord uh, through his, his whole life. That's what he wants. And so he wants to dwell in the house. He, that's where he wants to reside is near to God. In fact, as it says, you know, all the days of my life, just this idea of, man, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Have you ever seen something that's just so gorgeous that you're like, man, I want to look at it. I want to inspect every little part of it. Man, this is amazing. Um, and, and then you go, maybe you go to a museum and you're like, you just look at it. Look at it from different angles and different sides or all, all of that. Or maybe it's, it's, you're out in the wilderness and you come upon this place with mountains and snow and lake and all of this stuff. And you just, man, I want to just take it in. This is gorgeous. This this is beautiful. I want to see it. I want to gaze upon it. Well, that's what he's talking about. He want, he sees the beauty of the Lord, and he wants to be near the Lord. And so he says, for, for he will hide me in his shelter. The idea of really being close, having that protection from God. The reason he is doing this, the reason he wants to do this, is that he will protect him. He will give him shelter. And when it talks about conceal me under the tent, it's this idea that of a bird, maybe, with, with little birdlings or hiding under the mother's wings. And so this is what he says, all right, do that, and you will lift me up. You, you, will, you will put me in a position where I don't have to be afraid. And, and, and I, I don't have to be worried about those enemies that are coming against me. And in that, as a response of that, I am going to offer a sacrifice. Now, he's not earning, uh, uh, doing a sacrifice in order to win God's approval, but he's doing a sacrifice in response to what God will do, that he is concealing him and that he is giving him protection. He vows to sacrifice as, really as an expression of devotion. While well, he sings hymns of praise to God, proclaiming his mighty acts, his mighty works, and his redemption that is had in him. It's a response to God's love, not trying to earn it. And the shouts of joy is like a victory shout, anticipating what the, the work that the Lord will do. And so he knows that in him there is protection. And so he wants to be in, in, in his house. Then kind of this shift kind of happens, but it's really kind of in that same section that he is seeking the Lord. And it says this, seek the, uh, see, and, and 7 through 12, it's about seeking the Lord's face. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face. My heart will say to you, your face, O Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. Oh, you who have been my help, cast me, uh, me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and mother have forsaken me, 
but the Lord will take or will take me in. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversary of false witness have arisen against me and breathed out violence. So you see this continual seeking instead of in the house. Now we see it in the face of the Lord. And so he says, Lord, hear this. Hear my cry to you. Again, this continual of praise and prayer to the Lord. He's saying, be gracious. Respond to me in the right way with a confidence knowing that he will. And he says, all right. The, the thing that you have said, Lord, is seek my face. And in that, uh, of what the Lord says as far as seeking my face, David's response is, yes, I will seek your face. Today, the Lord says, seek him, seek after him. Do you seek after the Lord as the Lord has asked you to do that? And then he says, kind of three negative things. Don't do this, Lord, because I am seeking you. I want you. This is what I want. Don't uh, hide not your face. So don't don't hide your face. Be able to be found. I want to know you. I want to. And we know that God will do that. If we cry out to him, he hears our prayers. If we seek him, we will find him, as, as, as reiterated in the New Testament. And it says, it's like, don't, don't turn me away in anger. Guide me, direct me, be near to me. And it says, cast me not off. Uh, you know, keep me clear. Don't let me go away. Forsake me not. Don't don't leave me to, to be abandoned because he realizes in the Lord is salvation, how he is saved, how he is saved from his enemy. Ultimately, we see that the Lord is the salvation that everybody needs is being separated from him, in him. We have salvation from what we deserve, God's wrath upon us, but if you trust in Jesus Christ, you have salvation for your soul. And then uh, we have this, uh, my father and mother have forsaken me. We have no record of this. But what I think he's doing is he's saying the nearness of relationship that he has. He says, they may fall apart. They may go away. Those, those close relationships. Lord, don't do that to me. In fact, I want to know you to take me in. God, take it even in that close relationship. See, uh, those in the closest relationships that maybe you have, maybe you've had really close relationship and that has been broken and the hurt and the pain that resides there is just devastating. And, and, and he's saying, you know what? Lord, I know that you're not going to let me down. I want to know your way. I want to respond that way to others. Teach me how to do that. Teach me that love like the way you love and, and take me in. Don't forsake me. And we're told that he's even saying, all right, make things easier for me. Again, the safest path in that time is a level path. It's not going off to the side, going up and down, but it's a level path. And so it's like, make things work well for me that I, because of my enemies, they're going to cause all these problems, all these difficulties. Help me, protect me in that because they seek to do harm. David, as the Lord wants him, wants him to know about him, he comes before the Lord in broken humility saying, Lord, I need your wisdom. I need you, Lord. Is that the cry of your heart? Are you crying out to the Lord saying, Lord, I need you. I need your help. And then as enemies are, are trying to seek him, they're trying to do their worst against him. But he goes ahead and, and he's making this cry out because he is seeking his face. He's seeking to know him. And knowing of the Lord that he is his life, his salvation, his stronghold. Knowing all of that, and at the end of the psalm, it goes like this in verses 13 and 14. Just showing his confidence in the working of the Lord. I believe that you look upon the goodness of I believe I believe I that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait 
for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for him. Do you see that, that he is calling upon the Lord? He doesn't fully know the outcome of what's going to happen as he's doing this prayer. But he says, I have confidence that I'm going to wait on you. Again, uh, I, I think waiting is one of those things we do less and less nowadays. I remember, uh, you can think back to the time when not everybody had a cell phone. What did you do? He said, all right, I'm going to meet you here at this time. And, and you just waited for them to show up. You waited for them to appear and come and, and drive up or whatever it may be. And what, what you gauge it based upon your relationship, their character of who they were. If you knew that that person was really reliable, perhaps you'd wait a long time, a half an hour or an hour. But if you're like, man, that person's kind of flaky. I don't know if they're going to show or not. You go there, you wait 10 minutes. Well, they're not here. I'm going to go. And, and so what he, what he does is he's like, all this is going on. I'm going to wait upon you, Lord, because I know you're good. I don't know when this is going to turn around or how this is going to work out. But I am going to stay steadfast in you because in you is my help, is my salvation. You're who I seek. And it's in the land of the living as opposed to the land of death. That See, what we have is he has such confidence in the Lord that he's going to call upon him and really to seek his face. People tend to... Um, call God into question in light of their circumstances. Maybe something's not happening the way they wish it would. Right. Man, is God really good? No, that, that's the wrong way to look at it. Well, instead, we should be looking um, at our circumstances in light of the love of the Lord, that I need to trust in him, and it's in his timing and in his way, not my own. My confidence doesn't need to be in me. My assurance doesn't need to be in me. It needs to be in the Lord, knowing that he is good, that he is faithful, that he is going to protect. And so I will wait on the Lord. I will wait to have him answer this prayer. Our hope and confidence in dealing with difficulties doesn't come uh, from us, but it comes in knowing God and, and that we desire to know him more intimately, that we would know his ways, that we would walk in him in a closer manner. In fact, Romans 8, 31 and 32 says this, What then shall we say to those th these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Knowing of the Lord's love and how much he cares for us, that he gave us his son. Of course, he'll give us those things that we need in everyday life. The Lord will provide and we wait upon him. We wait upon his return. We pray for his return. We seek him. We desire to know him intimately. And this is great to know the Lord, to walk with him, to know that we don't have to fear. So if you can look at your life, at the things that you're fearing, can you say, all right, I'm going to hand those things over to God. I'm going to trust in him as I go through those things. As people have abandoned me, as people have uh, left, if, if, if I was dealing with sickness or finances or situations in your job, you can say, I don't need to worry about that. Because the Lord has it in control. A lot of times we go, man, this went wrong. I got to fix it. I got to do all this and that. Instead, God's saying, you don't understand. Perhaps I'm refining you. Wait upon him. Trust in him. And don't operate in our own flesh, but wait, but operate in a way of waiting on the Lord and seeking his face and seeking his guidance and doing the things that he calls you to do. Because he is good. He is gracious. And he loves you. If you haven't trusted in the Lord, I want to encourage you to trust in the Lord. Cry out to him. And if you've trusted in the Lord and yet you struggle with these things, do exactly what uh, the Lord said. Seek my face and respond as David did. Seek his face. Be in his word. Be praying before the Lord who created all things, knowing that in him is your safety, is your protection. So I want to encourage you to do that. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord right now, just asking that he would guide us and direct us. 
Lord, we thank you for the hope we have in you. We thank you, Lord, that we can have peace and security in you, that you are our refuge. Lord, help us to just continually to know you better, that we would walk with you, Lord, and that you would guide us. Help us to be patient in our waiting, knowing that you are good and glorious. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to go through God's word with me and be blessed.